Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with the CEO of Himlane. How are you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Hey, one of the topics that I often battle with, it's usually new landlords, but sometimes even more experienced landlords, is the idea that I am not chasing maximum rent. Mm-hmm. Right. There's there's this notion or talk track, I think, from people who don't actually have rentals. It's like, hey, if you're not getting max, maximum rent, you suck. You're terrible. What are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. Um, what I really come to believe is these people don't understand the cost of turnover. They don't understand, uh, you know, a turnover could really wipe out your year or years of cash flow if you uh, don't treat it carefully. But I wanted to get somebody else's opinion. What do you think about this? Uh, go chase max rent or, you know, frankly, be just a good human being. What do you, what do you think? Yeah. So I'll talk about it first on the vacancy side and then second on the lease renewal side, because I think it's important in both. Um, So let's just start with vacancy. Um, There's a lot of reports out there. We use them as basically, we call it a guideline. It's not like set Mm -hmm. of here's what your rent should be. Here's your rent estimate. Here's what it should be. We have tools and resources on hemling.com free ones where you can basically run a report figure out what your rental should be worth. However, as you know, and Zestimate, so the Zillow estimates was like case in point, Mm. those reports are not 100% correct because it doesn't matter what a report says. It matters how many tenants have inquired about your property. And it's a numbers game. The more that you have, the more you're able to select a qualified tenant. If you only have one person and they're unqualified, and you have to, and you're going with them, that is going to be a nightmare. That's going to cost you more in the end. And um, days on market, if you say, oh, well, I'm going to be a little bit more greedy, keep it there. I only have, you know, three unqualified tenants. I'm going to keep waiting 30, 60, 90 days until I get a qualified tenant. It costs you more in the end. And so what I say is get your rental up there as quickly as possible and advertise it and then check the number of leads you get. If in the first day you have 50 leads, you have priced your property way too low. <laughs> this yeah. is like way too low. Yeah. And um, that's where you'd probably want to increase the price there. Um, and, and sometimes, um, you know, because it's not a legally binding document, a tenant will come to you and be like, hey, I'll give you an extra $200 a month. Um, I'm qualified, et cetera. So you will have that. But you do want to make sure you get it right. And so uh, my recommendation is put it like, at or at or slightly um, below the market rate. So you can put it at market rate and advertise it. But that's a, that's the market rate that is from like these data reports. Mm-hmm. But if you find after three to four days, you have no leads or one lead, you need to drop that price right away. And the reason is, is your listing when you're brand new and advertising your rental is hot off the press. So all of these listing websites will put it in, in the top positions, basically featured of like, this is mm-hmm. new and hot. The longer it's on market, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, the lower it's going to drop in positions. And then now you're just trying to catch up, right? And even if you turn your listing off and turn it back on, these listing websites are smart. They're like, it's the same address. This is not hot. We're not going to promote it as much. And um, some there's some simple numbers we can do with it. And so if you think of like $2,000 in monthly rent, let's just say that's what it is. And that's priced slightly too high it could be vacant for you know, 30, 60, 90 days. If it's vacant for 90 days, that is essentially $6,000 of lost rent or 5,700 if you were to have it at 1,900 a month. Mm-hmm. And then let's just say, instead you had put it at 1,900, you dropped it by $100 and you got it leased out right away. Well, maybe you'd say, oh, well, I lost that $100 between $2,000 a month and $1,900 mm-hmm. a month. But if you take $100 and times it by 12, like a 12 month lease, that's only $1,200. That is a lot less than that vacancy Mm -hmm. of literally losing $1,900 a month for three months, where now you're close to losing $6,000. And so I think that pricing of your rental is really important at the beginning of knowing I'm going to advertise it and no one, not me, not data, not Hemling, is going to tell me what this price, what this property is worth. It's the number of tenants I have, the leads coming in. That is what is going to let you know, are you priced correctly? And you can do that by just looking at lead flow, how many tenants are coming in. And if you know you're advertising it everywhere, um, like Hemlane, where we'll just advertise it out everywhere, 
then you know you kind of can sleep at night saying, okay, it's not an advertising problem, it's a pricing mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. Um, so that's that's one thing I would say. Um, on the lease renewals, it's the same. Um, if you put it above market rate or at that market rate getting greedy, they might start looking at other rentals. And again, the vacancy cost of one month is probably is it's going to be more than just slightly putting it below market rate and incentivizing them to say this is still a good deal. Mm. And so just keep that in mind um, with it. That vacancy can be really expensive if you have great tenants, something to consider um, because that will save you a lot more in the end. Your tenants will be grateful. They'll have a, they'll be um, great tenants and take care of your asset. And then you'll have much more passive income. And it's interesting because property managers do make more Um, sometimes depending on their pricing structure to turn over the property, they make money for turnovers. You don't, you're losing money. You're paying a property manager and a leasing or a leasing agent, and you don't have any rent coming in. And so sometimes those incentives are misaligned. And so if you're doing it yourself, it is obviously best for you. And even if you're using a manager to, for you yourself personally, to try to keep those tenants in there, if they're good tenants. Of course, there may be other reasons they're moving. They're buying a property. They're moving away. They need a larger place. They need a smaller place. Those are great things to say, you know what? It wasn't the price. I know they're moving because of some other reason. Yeah. Yeah. When I look at being a landlord uh, and I've looked at my 22 years, the years other than one roof issue on an apartment building that wasn't budgeted, uh, every year a property misperformed, it was because of turnover. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time, you know, sometimes turnover is an eviction. It just had to happen. There was, you know, no, no, nothing I could do. But sometimes when you go for max rent, it's just basically permission to look somewhere else. Yeah. And, you know, that's really what you're doing. So that's why one of the things I love that we've added to my course, how to get started one rental at a time is the binder strategy, which yeah. obviously Dion from Dion Talk has brought to us. You basically have a conversation with the tenant and the tenant asks you for what they want. Right. So again, market might be 2000 in your example. They're at 15 they'll take 1780 or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's going to be it. Cause again, turnover is what gets you. Not only is the lost rent, but what are you going to have three or four days of cleaning costs? You're going to have yeah. to spend nine to 1200 on the light end. Heaven forbid it's a heavier clean or turnover. Turnover is what, again, across my entire portfolio and all the decades we've been doing it, turnover is what gets you. And heaven forbid you have two turnovers in the same year for whatever reason, wrong tenant selection or whatever, but turnovers would get you. So I got to tell new landlords, the binder strategy works, stop chasing maximum rents. You're giving your tenant permission. To, now they may not go, right? They may not have options. Kids may be in school, but you're going to give, you're going to give them permission to look. Yeah. Yeah, that's, exactly. That's not good. And then on the other, other side, right? New tenants. This is where I will go to market, right? The unit's vacant. It's as clean as, or turn or nice as it will ever be. Yeah. Um, but to your point, five days, one week, if I list it on Monday and I have no lead flow or, or even if I have lead flow but no qualified tenants, I will drop rent. This is the, you don't need to wait 30 days, right? You're waiting 30 days. You're not being a very, very good. And now again, I don't know all markets. This is my experience in my market. Be quicker. Vacancies kill, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, dead days or days lost, right? The asset's not producing income and that's why you own the damn thing. So go get income. So uh, I think these are great things. Again, landlords, you need to, it's your business, right? Top line number is rent, AKA revenue, dead days, lost days, turnovers are all expenses. Uh, um, So be a good landlord, manage it. That's on you. Uh, Where can they find the 30 day trial? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com, H-E-M-L-A-N-E.com. We'll even send you emails if you don't have any leads. We'll send you an email letting you know, hey, this is- (laughs) Got a problem. (laughs) You've got a problem here. You need to to adjust uh, because uh, we really do care about that of you getting um, the rental income um, and actually having your asset perform. Awesome. Thank you very much, Dana. Great. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.